Um, any buffalo in this area at any point along those lines? Mountain bison? Yeah. Um, there were mountain bison up here. There were uh, bison in the Absorcas, um, Yellowstone had uh, the mice, uh, mountain evidence. bison, which was mm -hmm. a lot of anecdotal stuff from the early uh, explorations into this region. Of course, they were one of the first to go. Uh, settlement times was really hard on bison. The last one was killed in the Lander area outside of the foothills of the Wind Rivers there around 19, 1870 or 71, I can't remember the exact date. That's pretty early because they only settled Lander in 1870 as an early settlement. So um, they disappeared pretty fast. Mountain sheep are di disappearing uh, a little slower in that they're not headed directly for extinction. But estimates in the 1940s and 1950s had mountain sheep populations at 2% of their original levels uh, prior to settlement times. So in other words, uh, what the sheep eaters had as a population uh, size, uh, considering the entire we western part of the continent, uh, was 98% larger than what we have or what we had in the 1950s and it's declining right now at a pretty rapid rate too. Just to put that in context for those who aren't familiar with this area because we tend to associate bighorn sheep with mountains, can you talk a little bit about their um, uh, their range historically and into the red desert and the desert sheep and how that fits into this picture? Yeah, uh, bighorn sheep are uh, just like elk today, are associated with mountains. They're not necessarily a mountain animal. They can live in the mountains. Elk, bighorn sheep both do just as well in the plains and deserts. They're well adapted to that type of terrain. In fact, we find that elk migrate out of the mountains and we think they do it seasonally because uh, there's less snow down in the lower country. Well, we also know that elk require an oil that doesn't occur in the mountains in order to have calves. So they're actually a plains animal that requires a certain type of sagebrush for the kind of oil they need to produce calves. That's a pretty good indicator that they may primarily be a plains and steppe animal as opposed to a mountain animal. They just happen to use the mountains because they're close by and there's lots of grass there. Uh, bighorn sheep are the same. They were found all along the Missouri River, all the way through the plains into the Red Desert, which is a, you know, a true desert with uh, salt, scrub habitat, salt scrub desert habitat type. Primarily plants in the Kenopodiaceae family, greasewood, saltbush, uh, fairly hostile environment. Uh, when the Hayden Expedition went through there, it was the most common animal in the Red Desert under those harsh conditions. And the last sheep was killed in the Red Desert around 1905 by a guy named John Davison. I knew his son, he told me about that experience. Uh, so settlement was, um, was tough on these plains and desert animals. They survived in the mountains and we now associate them with the mountains because you can't, you can't farm up here. If you were able to stick a blade in the ground and, and produce a profitable crop at 11,000 feet, I suspect the mountain sheep would be gone from here also. It's only interruption of their uh, uh, normal feeding and uh, migratory behavior at lower elevations that eliminated them and actually caused extinctions. These are extinctions because there are gene pools that no longer exist for bighorn sheep at lower elevations because of agriculture. They live here because agri agriculture hasn't extended um, its year-round um, uh, function up this high because of 
adverse climate. So what we have is little islands of disjunct sheep populations and that in itself has a limiting effect on the health of, of animals like bighorn sheep. There, since uh, rams, male sheep, tend to migrate long distances solid, in a solitary way, they could spread the gene pool across mountain ranges, across uh, intermountain valleys to other mountain ranges, which they do right here. We see big uh, rams crossing the highway going into the Absorcas occasionally. So the gene pool is, is con uh, uh, not only contiguous, but it's exchanged across this valley. That would have happened all the way from here to California. It no longer happens because agriculture has blocked the migratory passage of these rams. And now what we have is disjunct gene pools. And when they become threatened with extinction, it means an entire gene pool with a diverse and probably unique uh, uh, history, legacy, disappears forever. Can't bring it back. And that's diversity. That's what E.O. Wilson is talking about when he's saying we're losing diversity every day is that whenever one of these disjunct populations goes away, whether it's due to pollution or uh, uh, hunting or the fragmentation of the habitat, it's affecting sheep somewhere else. This diversity is the key to survival over the long term.